Jeremiah chapter number 8. We'll read three familiar verses. We'll begin reading in verse number 20. The Bible says, The harvest is past, the summer is ended, and we are not saved. For the hurt of the daughter of my people am I hurt. I am black. Astonishment hath taken hold on me. Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why then is not the health of the daughter of my people recovered? Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We want to echo what we just heard, that Lord, we want you to know we love you. And Lord, we're only able to love you because you first loved us. Now Father, we thank you for a good Sunday school hour. Thank you for allowing our folks to go over to the jail and to preach and minister there. God, thank you for the good choir singing and the good congregational singing and the special singing. Thank you for the good testimonies. Thank you for touching Miss Lois's grandson. And God, we're glad that, Lord, you're still in the healing business. And God, thank you for being a good God. And thank you for being our God. Now, Father, long before the foundation of the world was ever formed, you knew this day would befall us, and you knew what we'd stand in need of. And so, Father, I pray for the next few minutes that, God, you put a hedge about us, and I pray the sweet Holy Ghost of God would be allowed to do his office work, and he'd touch hearts and touch lives. God, I pray that, Lord, for that one that may be low this morning, that you, who are the lifter of our heads would go by their way and God touch them and help them for that one that may be struggling that you'll go along beside them and bear their load father for that one that is seeking answers that today they'd find those answers and God especially to crowd this size if there's any amongst us who are unsaved lost without God I pray today would be the day you'd reveal unto them their lost condition and help them to come and put their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, Father, use this unworthy vessel. Help us to be able to be seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And God, do a work amongst us. Show forth your mightiness. Lord, step out from behind the shadows and reveal your mighty arm. And, Father, we'll bless you for it. For it's in the holy and wonderful name of the Lord Jesus we do pray. Amen. Amen. I want to draw your attention to these verses. We have brought out how the prophet Jeremiah is revealing his heart here, and his heart is in this shape because uh, he has been preaching for some time uh, that judgment is coming, uh, and now judgment is about to befall the nation of Israel, uh, and they have yet to repent towards God. Uh, isn't it amazing all that is going on in America and yet people cannot see uh, the judgment hand of God uh, working against America. But I want you to notice uh, 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 some things about these verses. Notice first of all uh, 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 the season of no deliverance. In verse number uh, 20 the Bible says the harvest is past, the summer is ended and we are not saved. Uh, Jeremiah said... Uh, 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 this season is past, and this season is past, uh, and people haven't got right with the Lord. Uh, there has been some seasons of no deliverance. Uh, can I say, uh, in our day and age, uh, uh, the Bible is being preached more than it's ever been preached. Uh, the gospel message is more available than it's ever been. Uh, yet, uh, in th instead of things getting better, they seem to be getting worse uh, because people are not listening, they're not heeding the message uh, that Jesus saves. Uh, can I say, so many people are so confused so many people are not ready to meet the Lord. We see a season of no deliverance. Notice the state of mourning. In verse 21, Jeremiah says, For the hurt of the daughter of my people am I hurt. I am black. Astonishment hath taken hold on me. Listen, I, I know you feel the same way. 
You see what's going on in this country. You see what's going on in homes. You see what's going on in families. You see what's going on. Uh, and uh, you do not relish in the fact uh, that folks are struggling, uh, that our country is going bad, uh, that uh, uh, inflation's increasing, uh, and that folks uh, uh, everywhere seem to be uh, uh, having difficult times. We do not relish in that. Uh, uh, we hurt because our brethren hurt. Uh, and Jeremiah looked and he saw all the ill going on because by this time Nebuchadnezzar had laid siege. And can I say there was no commerce, Brother Donald, coming in and out and people were starting to starve to death. And Jeremiah said, when I see they're hurt, I hurt. He makes this statement, he says, I am black. What he's referring to is he is wearing the clothing of mourning. He has put on his mourning garments. Everybody knows or used to know that when people were mourning, they would wear black. And he said he was in astonishment. We see the state of mourning. We see the season of no deliverance. But notice the senselessness of their ongoing plight. He says, is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why then is the health of the daughter of my people uh, why then is not the health of the daughter of my people recovered can I say America don't have to be in the shape she's in Amen. And can I even make it a little closer Christians don't have to be the shape they're in Amen. we do have a God in heaven his arms not shortened where he cannot save. His ears not inclined to where he cannot hear. Uh, God is still well able to deliver. God is still well able to uh, 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 produce uh, uh, miracles in our midst today. Uh, but he says, ask and you shall receive. He said, you have not because you ask not. Mm, you see, people want God on their terms. They don't want God on his terms. Mm. But notice, if you will, that Verse 22. Notice the palliative. It says, is there no balm? Now, if you're old like me, you know what balm is. You know what salve is. Anybody know what salve is? Amen. Three of us, huh? Remember when you used to have liniment? Hmm? Yeah. Rub them muscles out in liniment. Stunk? Huh? Didn't help you none, but you didn't want any more of it because it stunk so bad. Hmm? Huh? Remember when you'd scrape your knee and mom would spray that back teen in your knee? That burnt worse than a scrape. No, no, I'm fine. I'm fine. Leave me alone, huh? Remember when they say you got to clean it out? Man, they'd put soap and whatever in that wound and all that. No, leave it dirty, huh? Well, that's our problem. We don't want it what it takes to cleanse us. Hmm? Yeah. Jeremiah is saying, is there no balm? Is there no re relief? Is there no alleviating this problem? Is there no comfort? Sure there is. It's just like the little child don't want to go to the doctor and get a shot. Right. You know why your mama takes your kids to get a shot? Because we had to go get shots. <laughs> so you're getting them too, huh? Huh? We see the palliative. Notice the place. He says, is there no balm in Gilead? Gilead was a rocky place. Can I say when everything's going smooth, uh, you don't need help. When you're on the mountaintop, you don't need help. Can I say that's why America's in the shape she's in. God has prospered this nation so much, uh, this nation doesn't think she needs God. Uh, 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 but listen, uh, we are in a rocky place uh, so our society, uh, but even more so, we're in a rocky place spiritually. Uh, most of you think because you put on a good shirt and, and good pair of pants, uh, nice dress, uh, come to the house of God, uh, sit on nice pews, uh, uh, you've gotten comfortable, uh, you think you're running well, uh, you don't know how poor, blind, miserable, wretched, naked we really are. Uh, uh, somebody needs to go get God. Uh, we need some help. Uh, if God doesn't show up, we got a whole generation going to die and go to hell. Uh, we're in a rocky place, whether we realize it or not. Mm -hmm. I can say a whole lot there. I'll never get through with the message. Notice the physician. Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician? 
there. I'm glad, my dear friends, there is a physician who can fix anything and everything. Now, I want to preach on this thought for a little while this morning. I want to preach on when all else fails, somebody call the doctor. When all else fails, somebody call the doctor. I'm going to tell you something. For me to call the doctor, all else will fail. Hmm? Uh, I'm not one of them people that run to the doctor. I'm sorry, Doc, we got Doc back there. I'm sorry, uh, 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 Miss Sheila knows, I hope she knows, that if I call her, I'm about ready to die. Hmm? <laughs> she already knows I'm crazy. When I had that heart cath last year, and three hours later, I'm sitting in a, in a meeting, she said, you're crazy. She has no idea how crazy I am. But I'm telling you today, uh, I, I'm not one to rush uh, to the doctor. Uh, I'm not one uh, who's seeking uh, medical advice uh, on a regular basis. I do not have M M MD uh, on the web, uh, a fast track. Uh, I, I really don't want, I want to be the last to know uh, if something's wrong with me. Uh, but when all else fails, uh, somebody call the doctor. Uh, uh, look around, things are failing. Uh, somebody needs to get a hold of the doctor. Uh, hey, uh, look at the health of our churches. Uh, Somebody needs to call the doctor. Uh, I heard where the president of the Southern Baptist Convention this past week uh, uh, said uh, uh, we need to embrace those that are homosexuals uh, in their homosexuality uh, and anybody that doesn't do it, uh, you're nothing more than a Pharisee. Name me what you want to, uh, but I'm not going to embrace that sin because God doesn't embrace that sin. Uh, God destroyed two cities over that sin uh, and he's going to destroy a whole lot more one of these days. Uh, I'm here to tell you uh, uh, this uh, thing's got uh, uh, in a mess. Uh, our churches are failing. Our homes are failing. Our society is failing. Uh, hey, somebody needs to call the doctor. Uh, now listen to me. You got to be careful. Not all doctors are the same. Mm. I don't want to call that doctor of the Southern Baptist Convention. Not all doctors are the same. Matter of fact, Job said in Job 13, 4, But ye are forgers of lies, ye are all physicians of no value. Uh, can I say there are physicians that cannot help you? Uh, there are physicians that cannot help us. Uh, uh, not all doctors are the same. Uh, you don't want to call Dr. Atheist. Uh, he's a physician of no value. Uh, he can't help you. Uh, you don't want to call uh, 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 Dr. Actions. Uh, he believes you're saved by your works. Uh, he can't help us. Uh, He's a physician of no value. Uh, hey, you don't want to call Dr. Arrogant. Uh, hey, he's a Pharisee. He's a physician of no value. Uh, you don't want to call Dr. Artificial. Uh, uh, Joe Osteen, he isn't going to help you. Uh, he's phony baloney. Uh, he's a physician of no value. Uh, uh, you don't want to call Dr. Antichrist. Uh, he's a physician of no value. Uh, he's anti-worship God. Uh, he's anti the Word of God. Uh, he's anti the ways of God. Uh, he cannot help you. Uh, you want to call a physician of value. Uh, and a physician of value, uh, I will tell you, uh, not always what you want to hear, uh, but what exactly what you need to hear. Uh, so what, what are you telling me? Uh, can I say this? Uh, a physician of value is going to check your symptoms. Mm. Uh, I don't want to go see a doctor that hadn't a bit more put a thermometer in my mouth uh, and he wants to tell me what's wrong with me. Right. Mm. I've seen some when they walk in the room, they've already got you diagnosed, won't even listen to you. Check that booger off my list, not going back to see him. Huh? Huh? Listen, I've already picked on her, I'm really going to pick on her right now. I know this about Dr. Sheila. If you go back, to, you go to see her and say, I got back problems. Before she ever does anything, she's going to take an x-ray. She's going to ask you what kind of symptoms you're having. You may think you're having a back problem and you might be having a chest problem. You know, sometimes a heart attack may actually show up as back pain. She's going to check all that out. She's going to see if you've got pain down your leg. Uh, She's going to check out your symptoms, how long you have this, uh, how's it affecting you. She's going to take an x-ray. Uh, hey, a 
physician of value is going to check your symptoms. Can I say this about a physician of value? A physician of value uh, is also going to run a series of tests. Hmm? Uh, Miss Crystal, how many, how many times you get blood work and tests run on you? What, four, five, six here in the last few weeks? Something like that? She's starting treatment tomorrow. And she's not starting treatment before they run the test. They've run the test. Can I say a physician of value is going to run a series of tests? And we got folks here in the medical. My wife's a nurse. We got other people in the medical. Brother Clint, he glows at night because he's been an x-ray man for 40 years, huh? Long before they do any work, they're going to come see you. You're going to take some pictures of them. Hmm? That's what you do. He's the picture taker. Huh? That's what happens. They run a series of tests. I'm talking about a physician of, of value. Huh? Did you ever uh, talk to somebody and they're going to tell you what was wrong with you and didn't know anything about you? Sure. I don't need that booger. Huh? Did you ever talk to a Christian? Going to tell you what all your problem is? Huh? And they don't even see the, the moat in their own eye? Uh, a physician of value check your symptoms run a series of tests but then they'll implement a system or a plan for your recovery again Miss Crystal they told you you got to take so many treatments for so long then they're going to test you again they got a plan don't they they're just not uh, throwing a dart on the dartboard and say well if this happens whatever we hit that's what we're going to do no they got a plan they got a system uh those doctors and those specialists go to school for a long time and they continue their education because uh, more discoveries are being made all the time uh, so they're up to date on the latest uh, uh, things going on so they know how best to treat you. And they implement a system and a plan, except when it comes to the colonel. They are shot in the dark with him. They said, he's old, we'll just fiddle around on him. He's the one they're figuring out all the new procedures on. Let's try this, see if it works. Oh, scratch that and off, huh? No, a physician of value will implement a system, a plan for your recovery. Can I say this? Uh, a physician of value, and these are the kind I don't like, they're going to scold you if you veer from the plan. Miss Annette will tell you in my chart it reads non-compliant. <laughs> huh? Miss Judy, Brother Jim's in medical field. I'm the one the doctors hate. Don't look at me that way. You're the same way. You get to feel better, you quit the medicine. Yeah. Huh? They tell me, nobody knows your body like your body, like you know your body. So if you feel your body's not doing what normally does, that's when you need to go to the doctor. But then you go to the doctor, and they want to tell you they know more about your body than you do. They're wrong. Uh, listen, I found out they can give me a sugar pill, and I can still eat all the Swiss rolls I want to eat. Is, they said, as long as your sugar don't get over seven, mine never gets over seven. I told Ned, I said, I'm good. I ain't no diabetic. I never get over seven. She says, because they got you on medicine. So what do you do? I take the medicine and I eat my Swiss rolls. That's what I do. <laughs> I don't bring up the Swiss rolls when I see them. Because I don't want scalded. Uh I saw that cardiologist last year because they thought for sure I was having a heart attack and they'd come find out it was a couple of medicines they'd mixed together. See, doctors don't always know because they don't always read your chart. Sometimes they just treat symptoms instead of treating you. But he asked me, he says, why do you drink Coca-Colas? Because they taste good. He says, you like drinking battery acid? I said, no, I drink Coca-Cola. He said, you need to drink coffee. I said, no. Nope. Why don't you like coffee? Because it tastes bad. You just don't know because you scalded your taste buds for 40 years and don't know what it tastes like anymore. That's black gold right there. Yeah. 
It's showing the blackness on the inside of your soul right now, brother. The altar's open. But I told him, I said, I don't like things real hot. And coffee is nasty anyway, but if it's cold, it's really nasty. I said, and if I drink coffee to where I liked it, you'd be getting on me for all the sugar I had in it, huh? Why don't you drink nasty? I ain't drinking nasty tea. Say, so drink sweet tea. Again, sugar, huh? So I just drink my Pepsi. What I'm trying to say is that doctor was getting all over me. I did cut back my Cokes. I don't drink a case a day anymore. <laughs> uh, I said, I need the caffeine. You wouldn't like me with, with me not being on caffeine. But see, they'll scold you if you veer from the plan. Can I say this? A physician of value, they are soothing even when the news isn't good. And I say this, a lot of doctors don't know God. But even a lot of doctors that don't know God know there are times when something bigger than them has entered the room. But even those that don't see the Lord walk in the room have compassion when the news isn't good. Can I say this about physicians of value? Sometimes they may have to perform surgery. I'm thankful I've got some doctors. That's the last resort. There are some out there that's the first resort. I don't see that booger. Uh, I want to see if there's a way they can help me to keep me from going. Even though I've had a bunch of them, I'm really not looking to sign up for any more. But as a last resort, a physician of value we may have to perform surgery. I've said all that to say there is a danger of self-diagnosing. The Bible says, as a man think that thinketh, so is he. So, Miss Marcy, if you think long enough that you're sick, guess what? You're going to be sick. Matter of fact, when somebody has something like cancer, the doctors will tell you your mental awareness and thought process toward that is just important as all the treatments in, the, in your healing. If you've got a good positive attitude, you have a better chance of success in getting over that than if you're doggy downer. Hmm. Uh, but there are a lot of people that like to self-diagnose. i got a runny nose. Therefore, it must be COVID. Huh? We'll self-diagnose, we'll run to the internet. My wife will tell you, I'm sure Miss Judy will tell you, any other, Brother Jim, any other nurses in here, Doc will tell you, the worst thing you can do is run to the internet, try and figure out what you've got. Because they're not asking you the right questions relating your symptoms. You need to have some tests run. You need to let a doctor of value look at you. The internet doesn't care. It's just throwing out information. And not all of it is factual. Amen. Now, i got a mother-in-law. I love her. God bless her. If she reads it on the internet, the internet, she thinks it's true. If you're the same caliber, I want to see you after church. i got something I want to sell you. Huh? The internet's full of snake oil. Self-diagnosing, you trying to figure out what you got. Why don't you just go to the doctor? You know what I've learned? Every time I think I know what it is, I go to the doctor. It's not near as bad as what I dreamed up in my mind. Mm. Uh, there's a danger in self-diagnosing. I've said all that to say this. We have a great physician. His name is Jesus. He's the one who does any healing that anybody will ever get. He is the healer, huh? Can I say something about the great physician? He already knows all your symptoms. Can I say something about him? 
He don't need to run a series of tests. He already knows the diagnosis. Uh, can I say this? Uh, he does have a system and a plan for your recovery. It's called the scriptures. Uh, he knows exactly how to help uh, in the area that you're deficient in. Uh, can I say this? Uh, when you veer off the scriptures and try and do it yourself, he will scold you. Uh, 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 every now and then, uh, he has to tell you like he told P uh, Peter, get thee behind me, Satan. Uh, every now and then, uh, he has to tell you you're wrong. I know we live in a society that nobody's wrong. Uh, nobody wins. Nobody loses. Everything's in a tie. Uh, no, uh, listen. Uh, if you're not right with God, you're wrong. Uh, and he's quick to tell you about it. Uh, uh, can I say, uh, 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 even when you're facing a trial or facing something uh, uh, that is much bigger than you and the news isn't good, uh, hey, uh, he has peace uh, uh, that passeth all understanding uh, and he knows how to soothe us uh, and comfort us. Uh, he is the God of all comfort uh, and he left us his peace. He said, my peace I leave with thee. Uh, what a blessing to know uh, uh, when everybody else is walking out, uh, he's walking in uh, and he knows how to calm a troubled soul. Uh, Amen, mm. Paul said, everybody forsook me. Nevertheless, the Lord stood by me. And can I say this? Sometimes he has to do spiritual surgery on us. He has to cut some things away from us that will better us. <laughs> Let me say this and I'll be done. In a, our great physician, in the Lord Jesus Christ, you never have to schedule an appointment. He's always available. He's just one prayer way. Huh? He said, call unto me and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things that thou knowest not. Huh? You never have to make an appointment. Now, I appreciate appointments. Huh? Listen, I... I'm like you. We live in a society that doesn't sleep and we're always busy. We're running a million miles an hour with our hair on fire uh, and sometimes trying to fit things in and get everything in and all that. It doesn't always work out in our schedule. But I got good news. Jesus always does. You don't have to make, schedule an appointment with him. Can I say this? With our great physician, you don't have to sign a waiver. Huh? You don't have to sign a HIPAA form. You don't have to sign a form that they'll bill insurance. Uh, you don't have to sign any forms. Uh, you just need to talk to him. That's all you got to do, huh? Mm. Can I say this with our great physician? Uh, you don't have to shell out a copay. He's already paid for it all, huh? Uh, what a blessing. And can I say this? In our great physician, you don't need to suffer any longer. Again, in verse 22, he says, Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why then is not the health of the daughter of my people recovered? Why were they still suffering? Because they chose to suffer. Friend, you don't have to suffer anymore. I don't know what you're going through, what you're facing, but you don't have to suffer anymore. We have a great physician who is of great value, and he has the answers you need this morning. Whatever you're facing, if you're here today and you're not saved, you're lost, he'll save you. If you're here today and you're sick, hey, he's got the answer. He'll either heal you, help you, or hold you. I promise you, huh? If you're here today uh, and uh, 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 you've got a situation going on, you don't know uh, what the answer is, uh, he says, seek and you shall find. Why don't you come and ask him? He'll give you the answer you need. Hmm? No matter what you're dealing with. He's the great physician, and he will be the bishop of your soul, and he'll help you this morning. The old hymn writer wrote, just a little talk with Jesus makes it right. And I found sometimes just being able to talk about it, somebody will help you. But when you talk, talk to the one who can change things, it'll really help you. Hmm? It'll really help you. He is the great physician. Everything else is failing. Why don't somebody call the doctor? Get him on the scene. You know what I help our church? Jesus. 
You know what will help your home? Jesus. You know what will help you at school? Jesus. You know what will help you on the job? Jesus. You know what will help you sitting in traffic? Jesus. You know what will help you uh, when you're sick? Jesus. You know what will help you at the grocery store? Jesus. Uh, you know what will help you in every facet of your life? His name is Jesus. None other name given under heaven whereby we must be saved. The name of Jesus. A name that's so wonderful and so remarkable that the first time it was ever spoken for human ears to hear, it was spoken by an angel. Can I say, in that great physician, in this one called Jesus, he cares about you. Amen. And he tells us, casting all our cares on him, for he careth for you. Why would you suffer any longer? Oh, I want to quit, but I can't. Colonel? We have no problem telling everybody else about our problems. Of course, we're not usually telling. We're usually complaining. We have no problem complaining about everything. But we don't talk to Jesus about it. He's the one to change it. He's the one to satisfy it. You know what I found a lot of times? Instead of changing it, what he does, he changes me which helps me handle it today. Everything's failing. Will somebody please call the doctor? His name is Jesus. Let's all stand. Brother Clint, come get a song of invitation. God spoke to your heart. Just come talk to Jesus about it. If you're here today and you're not saved and you'd like to get saved, just come. We'll take the Bible, show you how you can be saved. Jesus save you. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. He wants to save you. Made a, he paid the cost to save you. He'll save you. If you're here today and you're facing some uncertainty, why don't you come talk to Jesus? He can give you some direction. I don't know what you need, but I know the answer. And his name is Jesus. They're picking out a song. Let's pray. Father, we love you. Thank you for the goodness of God. Thank you for caring about us. Thank you for being exactly what we need and when we need it. Now, Father, I don't know anybody's heart in here. I just know you put this message on my heart. So, God, I pray you'd help folks. Already a lot of folks in the altar, I pray you'd help them and bless them. Speak to them. Lord, give them exactly what they need. Lord, there may be others that need to come. Help them to just come. And God, I pray you change lives, change our homes, change our church, change our community. God, we dependent on you. Have your way now. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks to listeners like you, IBC has had over 100,000 views on our YouTube channel. If you haven't already, subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.